I don't trust people who put bandages on their face. If he has something to say, why didn't he just say it? It was just an act. It was an act of violence, and you loved it! Good evening. I'm Nash the Slash. Are you ready to be mind-fucked? All I can say is people should expect the unexpected. I'm not giving away any secrets. An eccentric character, probably a sort of misunderstood genius, really. He was so ahead of his time. Theatrical but edgy. But extraordinary, gifted player. He made his character his art. You felt something big going on. Very few people knew what he really looked like. The great thing about my stage persona is on stage I'm two feet taller and 20 years younger. The bandages came about as, as a happy accident. But you don't have to be a psychologist to think there's definitely a sense of hiding one's true self. The man with no face has no disgrace. Paging Dr. Freud about the bandages. We were raised in what appeared to be a picture-perfect upper-middle-class North Toronto background. He wasn't afraid for people to know, but he was afraid for people to know. You gotta remember the bathhouse raids. Police did whatever they wanted with impunity. There was very little accountability. If you were out in those days and you were a personality or someone famous, it could be very dangerous. Your life could be ruined pretty much overnight. I do think that affected a lot of his early work, both the reflective pieces and also the anger. He had a very unpleasant and almost uncontrollable temper. Are you trying to make me jump over this desk and choke you? There was a very loving, caring and nurturing side of the man. There was two sides to him. He was very sensitive. He was an antagonistic son of a bitch. It's almost like a kind of a immolation of the self, you know? Destroying his instrument, covering up his body, like the process seemed to be to ascend to some kind of greater thing. It's a cathartic experience to expunge those often internalized traumas and conflicts. You fart through your bandages. <laughs> <laughs> it always surprised me that he didn't become huge, that the whole world didn't recognize it. He could have been much, much more popular and well-known, but somewhere in the back of his psyche, he didn't want to be that big. I think in a way, he wanted to stay sort of an anti-hero. You say no to big business, you're gonna struggle. People don't know what to do with you. Eventually, people will do nothing with you. If you don't make successful music, you don't get to continue doing it. I would write a book about him, but unfortunately, it would end up being kind of a forensic study into the mind and madness of him. There's more. The story doesn't end there. Oh, no.